All right, so for partitions of line segments, you do need to pay attention to the process. You also need to pay attention to how each question is worded because each question may be worded differently. And you can make some major mistakes if you don't read the question fully and understand what the question's asking of you. Um, so for number one, uh, this is fixed on your end. Uh, however, uh, it didn't give you the coordinates of point A and C. Um, I want point C at negative seven, one which is on your page, I have it written. Um, and I want point A at nine five. So you would see it as on your page as A is nine five and C is at negative seven one. All right. And what we want to do is we want to find point P. So that way the ratio of segment AB to BC is 3 to 1. So that means that from point A, AB would be that 3, and BC would be that 1, so that means that point B is three fourths of the way from point A. And essentially what we're trying to do is we are trying to find the uh, X and Y value of point B, knowing that point B is three fourths along this blue line segment from point A. Um, so I, what we are going to be doing is we're going to be using slopes to help us uh, determine that. Now, slope is rise over run. Your run represents the X values, the rise represents the Y values. And if we start at point A, my run would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, um, 16. But I'm going negative 16 for my run to get from point A to point C. And for my rise from point A to C, I would have to go down four units. So that would be a negative four units. That's my rise and my run. Now, what I'm gonna essentially do is I'm going to take my um, run, which is negative 16, and I'm gonna multiply by this ratio of 3 fourths. Now, when I multiply that ratio by 3 fourths, that's not it doesn't give you the X value of point B. What it gives you is the run from point A that point B would be. So what we would need to do then is if we would know the run of point B from point A, we could then take that run and add it to my X value of point A to find the X value of point B. So essentially what we're going to do to find point B is we're going to take my run of negative 16 and we're going to multiply it by that 3 fourths and that will give me the run of point B from point A. So then I would need to add 9, the, the x value of 9, to that run to find out exactly how far away point B is. Uh, or, or to find out exactly the x coordinate of point B. And then same with your rise. You would take your rise and you would multiply it by your 3 fourths. And that would give you the rise from point A to point B. So then to find the actual y, y value of point uh, B, we would need to take that rise and add it to point A. So when we do that, a negative 16 times a 3 fourths um, plus a 9 
gives us that B is at a negative 3. And a negative 4 uh, times a 3 fourths plus a 5 gives us that our Y value is at 2. So point B is at negative 3, 2. So um, if I graphed point B on the graph, that is 3 fourths of the way along this line segment AC. Okay, now there is a, a way that we can do it without the graph. And I'm actually going to show you that in number two before we get too dependent on the graph, because then we get to numbers three, four, five, and six. I'm not going to give you a graph on the test. So I don't want you to get too dependent on the graph. And actually, I think I took away the graph for number two uh, on your notes. But um, basically, there's a way that we can do this without the graph. What we did here was we found the, the rise and the run, which is slope. So we can use slope formula to help us figure out uh, this negative 16, the run and the rise. So keep that in mind as we're going throughout number two. So it says, I want to find the coordinates of P along directed line segment AB. Let me draw AB. It's, this is just a rough sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. So P is going to be somewhere along that segment. And we want the ratio of AP to PB to be 3 to 2. So what that means is that point P is 3 fifths. along um, the line segment from point A. Okay, so here's what you need to remember. We're going from point A, or at least that's the ratio that I used. Um, I will show you if you wanted to go from point B, but for right now, we're going from point A. And if we're going from point A, that's your starting point. And we always label our starting point x1, y1, and x2, uh, and then our other points x2, y2. And so now to get our rise over run, we're going to do the slope formula. And we need to do the slope formula correctly. y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So a 10 minus a 4 is a 6, and a 6 minus a 3 is a 3. Before you reduce in these problems, we do not simplify the slope. Otherwise, you will not get the correct answer. Just like up above in that uh, problem up here, there was a way to simplify the rise and the run, but we did not simplify the rise and the run because it would not get us the correct distance that point B needed to be from point A if we simplified the rise and the run or the slope. Okay, so do not simplify the slope. Now in the slope formula, you do need to recognize that the denominator represents your x, uh, so your run, your run, uh, which is your x values. And your numerator represents your rise, which is your y values. Okay, now to find point P, we take our ratio of 3 fifths. We take, I'm um, sorry, 3 fifths. And we multiply that by my run, which is 3. And then we add it to the x value of the starting point, which is 3 from point A. And then to find y, we take our 3 fifths, we multiply it by our rise, which is 6, and we add it to the y value of our starting point, which is 4. So from here, um, if I do a 9 divided by 5 plus a 3. I wind up with my x-coordinate of point P being a 4.8. 
And if I do a six times a three fifths plus a four, I wind up with my Y value being a 7.6. Um, or you can write it as a fraction. If you wrote the 4.8 at eight as a fraction, that would be four and four fifths. And if you wrote the 7.6 as a fraction, that would be 7 and 3 fifths. You can also write it as improper fractions. I'm okay with that. But I'm going to show you or I'm going to run through with you what you would change if you decided you wanted your starting point to be point B. Well, first, the ratio would change because point P is 2 fifths away from point B. So you would use the ratio of two-fifths if you wanted to start with point B. Also, what would change is you would label your point B x1, y1, and point A x2, y2. So when you do the slope formula, you would do 4 minus a 10 over a 3 minus a 6 instead. And so you would get a negative 6 over a negative 3, and still you do not simplify that slope. Then to find point P, you would do two fifths, because that would be your new ratio, times your new run, which would be negative three. And then you would add it to the X value of point B, which is six. And you would get the same exact X value. And then for the Y value, again, you would do two fifths, because that would be your new ratio, times your new rise, which would be negative six. And then you would add it to the y value of uh, point B because that was your starting point and you would get the same y value for point P. So it doesn't matter which point you start with or label as your starting point, um, but just make sure that you get the correct ratio and you get the correct uh, slope down, all right? And you add it to the correct point at the end. All right, so we're gonna do this next problem. And then we're going to have to extend the other three in a new video. So I have segment this time. Be careful. It says segment BA. And we're finding point P. So it partitions BA in the ratio of 1 to 3. So what that means is that um, BP would be labeled as 1 and PA would be labeled as three. And so P is one fourth along the segment from point B. All right, so I'm going to label point B as X1, Y1, and point A as X2, Y2. I need to do everything perfectly. So my slope formula needs to be perfect. Y2 minus Y1 all over X2 minus X1. My slope formula is a negative six over a negative eight. And we do not simplify the slope. Normally we would, but in these problems, it would not work if we simplified our slope. Remember, the denominator represents your run, which are your x values, and the numerator represents your y's, which are uh, rise, which are your y values. So now to find point P, we take our ratio of 1 fourth, and we multiply it by our run, which is negative 8. And our starting point was point B, so I need to add it to the x value of point B. And then I take my ratio again, I multiply it by my rise, which is negative six, and then I add it to the y value of my starting point, which is point B again. So I wind up with A, when I simplify all this, five as my x, uh, x value of point P, and then A, 6.5 as my y value. Now, if you decided to use point A as your starting point, your ratio would be 3 fourths, your slope would be positive 6, 8, and you would add it to the x and y value of point A instead of point B at the very end. All right, continue the next lesson or continue this lesson in the next video.